Ah, uh, yes. The Nimoy. Former security officers. Detectives. And judges of Stygia. But now, an extinct species in an underworld not designated for elongated survival. So together, let us bear these former qualities in mind while entering the void below. Security. Detection. And judgment. A sheep to its flock. Arwen can barely remember how she found herself in this predicament. In one moment, she was experiencing the memories of Charon through the eyes of Junko Kiragiri. In the last thought you can recall, there was a plummet from your very mind and soul. A roller coaster ride straight down, down into the depths of oblivion. Your eyesight is covered in an empty, bleak, darkness, only feeling the walls and banisters of the labyrinth sailing past you at tremendous speeds. As Arwen descends deeper and darker into this hellscape, she can hear the constant pained whispers and agony of the truly damned. You can taste smoke, rotten earth, and soreness in your mouth. The feel of a filthy mist precipitating against your flesh like plasm. Although quite prominently, as you make landing on what can only resemble a surface, you can still hear clearly the echoes of a former premonition clarify itself in the center of your mind. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> How original. <laughs> You're dead. How original. <laughs> You're dead. How original, again and again, these words, this exchange repeats and echoes in your head. When Arwen awakes from this surreal struggle, her vision is blinded by a perpetual Artificial light source above your face. Light after light after light passes you by on a tiled ceiling. It becomes abundantly obvious to you that you are located inside a hospital right now. Lying across a wheeled stretcher. 
almost completely paralyzed from head to toe. The paramedics pushing your cart seem intent on getting you to an emergency room very quickly. You appear to be missing your right leg from whatever accident you were a part of. You can wiggle the toes on your left leg. But there is no response from your right. But what was the incident that got you here in the first place? A myriad of unanswered questions begin to flood your head. For better or for worse. Nicole, I need you to please roll your perception plus alertness when you get a chance. Okay. Uh, difficulty six? Correct. Two successes. Good to know. So, whether you alertly notice, or perhaps you don't, <laughs> there are groups and groups of surgeons wearing white masks on their faces, observing you carefully and muttering to one another a variety of medical jargon that means very little to you. Considering the stress of this whole scenario, eventually as you are rushed across the hospital floors, you begin to notice some of these staffed surgeons will step closer to your body, uh, your corpus, lying paralyzed on the stretcher. One of these professionals will place his latex gloved hands all along the right hand side of your face and scalp. Very carefully and elegantly you will see in horror as the right side of your face is very haphazardously removed from your head. The slimy, plasmic sinews and ghostly, grotesque tendons beginning to rip and tear away, almost like pulling young dried roots from the wet dirt. Nicole, I need you to roll your perception plus your awareness now. Let's see, that would be four, six, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, four successes. Okay. Arwen will gather her courage to turn her left eye in the direction of her face being removed and carried away by these surgeons. You will oddly notice, although it may seem surreal to you to consider, the face of a man Strangely elegant, fine tourmaline skin, and a very regal gaze from the singular eye staring back at you as it is carried out. Nicole, you said four successes? Yes. Okay. You will also observe as both your left 
and your right arm are carefully pulled away and off your body. A surgeon will comment very positively about this and take an arm away into a separate holding room off on the sides. The right arm appears to be covered in bizarre tattoos that are constantly shifting and moving along the flesh. There also seems to be some traces of inky black ichor along the wrists and fingertips. The left arm removed appears oddly muscular, powerful, a workman's looking arm. At the same time, you will notice that the details about this arm are <laughs> far too perfect, way too perfect. At the same time, you will notice that there is a deception on this undead corpus, a deception built around this arm that very few can spot. So let me shift our scene once more. Bluntly, you are crippled and placed into ruin, especially with only one leg for you to stand on if needs be. Your best choice is to remain on the stretcher and see how this dark passion play conducts itself in hopes to gather more clues, thoughts, and ideas. The operating room they are placed within is very unkempt, dimly lit, and seems to be in tatters upon an inspection of some darker corners. There are three figures standing all around you while you are being placed on the operating table for specific inspection. So to the north is a pallid-looking young man, scars on his face and his body. Let me activate him on roll 20 for you, Nicole. So, pallid-looking young man, scars on his face and his body, curly, ashen, messed-up hair, and apathetic blue eyes. He wears a black scrubs against his sickly, skinny frame of a body. And then just to his right, at the east wall is a former business attire man with a single golden earring dressing his left ear, scarification along his left eyelid, slick back brown autumn hair, and gleaming yellow eyes. And 
And then to the west, is a woman who appears to be in a constant state of decay and disintegration. She has no eyes, only a flat, unfeeling surface across her face, gazing toward you. All that remains of her personal effects is a sophisticated black dress and a tribal-like necklace. With every movement she makes, more of her body begins to crack and turn to dust. Nicole, what would you like to do? Um... Let's see. Uh, can I speak? Because I know you said that I was paralyzed from most of my body. Can I just move my eyes or can I also like open and close my mouth? You open and close your mouth. It seems you are able to speak as well. Okay. Uh, I guess I will look at... I'll, I'll look at this guy. Okay. And go... Where am I? What's going on? She, she's definitely in a panic, but she's trying not to cry. You are in the room of operations. I am here for your final rites. You fell off the pathway of religion years ago. But that does not mean that a higher power has forgotten about you. Or does not love you. My job is to give you a proper send-off when you have finally surrendered. And are ready to pass on from this existence. And he just stares at you very solemnly, Nicole. Um, is there no way for me to go back? You say that, circle? You say that yeah. to the same man? Yes. Go back? You must pull yourself together. Right now you are not whole. But... To make yourself whole again is a struggle indeed. But I am here for you, Wenlin. I am here for you. If you wish to surrender, if you wish to give up, Wenlin, all you need to do is speak with me. And I will remove you from this place. Ever so quickly. I promise. And he makes a motion across his face in a very holy, orthodox way. While closing his eyes. Okay. Um, a look at the sky mm -hmm. and say, how do I pull myself back together? Because she's not talking to this guy anymore. <laughs> let's let's okay. move to this one. The man up to the north will sniffle a little bit. <sighs> just, I, I'm just another nurse in this facility. I, I, I check your vitals, I observe your stability, and I defib you if I start to see you fade from us. Uh, don't take it personally. 
I don't know how to put you back together. That's not my job. All right. I guess maybe third time's the charm. And she'll <laughs> look at the last one and say, please, just, is there any way that you can help me figure out how to pull myself back together? This woman will look down at some paperwork, which is laughable considering she has no eyes. Let us begin then. Wen Lin. We have a preliminary procedure already cleared for your next of kin. Continued surgical operations can only be conducted with your verbal consent. And she looks to you as if you're trying to ask her a question and she's trying to find the answer to your question. I, I'm just a consultant. Nothing more and nothing less. Clarity of your decision making is essential if you want me or you wish to continue further from your current state. And with that, in the room, we'll assemble three different individuals. The first of these individuals, we'll start with the one on the furthest to the right. Is one who seems to be very bestial, very wolf like, multiple arms, multiple teeth and jaws. Again, the eyes seem to be blinded and covered, but the hands are also covered in blood which can be either reassuring of experience or terrifying, considering where they've been. The second individual is the one in the middle. A little bit more humanistic if it weren't for the very serpentine fangs protruding from her mouth. She'll lower her sunglasses towards you, revealing some even more serpentine-looking eyes that seem to match in color to the snakes that she wears as her hair. You remember from your childhood reading about mythology such as this. What was it, Medusa? The Gorgons, ones who could turn you into stone with their mere gaze, she does not turn you stone with her stare, but you do feel absolutely uncomfortable. And then the last individual to the furthest of the left. A very, very, uh, Dilapidated form. Again, similar to the first with multiple arms. Very smoky and shifty in form. You can barely see the features that it has. All that you know is that it has more than two eyes opened on its body. More than three eyes, in fact. And it's very sharp fingers and nails are always constantly moving as if ready to take action. The consultant that you spoke to last will look to you, Arwen, and ask, which one of these surgeons do you choose to operate on you 
Wenlin. Am I allowed to speak to them? Yes. Okay. I'll speak to the one on the far left first. Okay. Um, is it like I get to choose who operates on me? So I guess I can I ask like why should I choose you? He will respond in a very hoarse and cryptic tone, almost as if his voice has been muffled by the abyss around his mouth. And that is all that you receive in response. All right. Let's go to the one in the middle. Okay. And I will say, are, are you able to translate what they said? She will respond as she opens her mouth. And that is the response that you get. Okay, I will look back at the counselor. And yes. I will say, can you, is there any way that you can explain to me what they're saying? Oh, oh, not at all. I don't, unfortunately, I am not a surgeon or a professional. I don't understand the lingual of such doctors. She'll smile at you. Why do I have to choose one of them? Well, <laughs> and uh, you'll see on a... Um, what appears to be a separate table that is being wheeled into the room itself is, and you can kind of verify this from just the familiarity of your own body, your missing leg. You do have your left leg intact. This is your right leg that is being wheeled in. All three surgeons will look at this with intent and purpose. And the consultant will look at you and say, well, we got to get you back on your feet now, don't we? <laughs> and after the leg that is familiar to you is brought in, Alongside of it is something a little bit more sinister. It is something monstrous and bestial. Like the insides of a creature that you have never seen in your life. And it is very repulsive to you. The longer you stare at it, the more you realize that there is some kind of string and needle that is being pulled out from this pile of innards that is next to your leg. And the consultant will look back to you. Back on your feet. <laughs> you, you get it? I hope you do. Oh, I, I get it. She gives like a awkward laugh. <laughs> oh, th th then you have chosen your, your surgeon then, have you? <laughs> no, it's just... Is one surgeon better than the other? Like, why do I have to choose... What's the difference between their... 
The last surgeon that you have not spoken to, the more bestial and more animalistic one in the corner, will um, clench his fist, his blood-covered fists together in almost a rage and start to slam them against the walls nearby, cracking the tiles, and he will growl and roar as if impatient and undignified and almost unwilling to work on you as a whole. Like he is above it. Everyone else in the room does not budge to this. They do not react to it as he does this. They are just showing a regular face as if this was normal. And then they look back at you. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your question again? I... It's okay. Um... Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you've chosen your surgeon then? I, I guess I, I have to. And she mm. will... Mm. I, Arwen will pick the one on the far left. Okay. The other two surgeons will look at each other. And um, they will depart immediately, leaving the room. This surgeon will uh, make his way over to you. He will pick up your familiar right leg and press it against your corpus. But then he will also pull from the string and needle of the mysterious innards that I had mentioned earlier and start to pull from that. And just as he is unraveling that composition of innards, and it begins to wriggle in its spot, he will start to sew, pull and sew against your upper leg, reattaching your leg back to your body again. Creating the necessary stitching. It's a few minutes to accomplish. There is no pain. There is no soreness or anguish. There is just the horrific display of your leg being reattached. When it is completed and done, the entity will use its sharp fingernails to cut off the string and complete the sewing process. Arwen will now have both of her legs fully intact. And you can feel your toes start to wriggle and move on your right leg to match your left. The entity will back up one pace from you and will satisfactory look at its work and progress that it has made on you. He will utter in your direction. The consultant will smile in response to this and say, Well, now that your preliminary is completed, we must, um, well, attend to the rest of you. <laughs> now, don't we? And as you kind of like lean upward from your position, now having both legs to kind of balance yourself up, you will notice that you are indeed missing still your left arm, your right arm, part of your face. In fact, you only seem to have one eye left. You're missing one of your eyes. And you look around to see if these things are obtainable 
close nearby, and they aren't, unfortunately. And the uh, man that I had mentioned earlier will walk up to you while you are concentrating and focusing on yourself and look to you and say, I know this is a lot for you to bear right now. I know this is difficult. Do you wish to give up, Arwen? Do you wish to surrender? It's okay to say yes. I understand. But I am here for you. Please. Tell me you want to give up, Arwen. She will shake her head no and say, no, I'm not giving up. I, um, I want to keep going. Ah. Wow. I understand your disposition. And I am here for you. In case you change your mind. He will step back a couple paces after you say this. Looks like he's praying to himself after that interaction. Nicole, do you wish to get up? No. Okay. You should be able to move at this point in time. What do you wish to do? Um. You have no arms. You're missing one eye. Okay. And within this room, because I'm assuming, is this like a door? Yes. It appears to be one of those uh, kind of curtains that you can move aside if you need to. Okay. Um, since I know I don't see any of my body parts in here. Well, first I'll turn to the consultant and I will ask Am I supposed to find my body parts and mm. bring them here? Or. What, what am I supposed to do now? Uh, yes, fa finding your body parts would be a wise decision to make, indeed. And um, if you bring them back here, um, your surgeon that you have selected can sew them back onto yourself, make you whole again. I must warn you, though, that <laughs> um, your original body parts were donated they were given to others who were in need. So asking for those back might be arduous and a little hectic, too. So let me make this a little bit easier for you. And uh, she will reach into her uh, dress that she is wearing. And she will hand you what appears to be a vorpal blade. A sharp butcher's blade used for cutting meat on a cutting board and cutting flesh. It seems to be covered in various designs and runes and iconography. And she looks to you and says, if you use this, the victim will feel no pain. They will feel no agony. It will be a clean cut. And it will bring you what you require. But my goodness will they notice if you use this to cut what you need. So be wise. And she hands you the vorpal blade and places it in your hand. <laughs> Good luck, Wayne. Then. In my so wait, hold on. Now I'm confused. So I got so I do have two legs and an arm. Um, she, you have the blade kind of placed um along your side, so it it's been kind of like placed in your possession. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm. All right. Then uh, I guess. Ooh, as it were. I guess I will move forward and 
go to the next room. Okay. The next room doesn't seem to have anything of interest or consequence, but there does appear to be an exit um, to the east side of the wall. Okay. I will head there. If I see anything that seems to be useful, I will stop, but otherwise I'm going through the door. Okay. And the only thing that you can really feel or notice in this moment is just the strange amount of weight from this Vorpal blade that has been placed at your side. The uh, door in front of you will open automatically as it were. And you will step to the other side of the room. When you do this, there is another entity that awaits you on the other side. Perhaps this is the entity that had opened the door for you in the first place. And in front of you, leaning against the wall, after you exit, appears to be a young individual wearing the skull of a dead animal, perhaps a wolf, and wears a very large hoodie across his body. The hood seems to embody its own ears as well. But he keeps they keep their hands tucked into the pockets unceremoniously and stares deeply at you with his skull mask as you exit the room. Hey, what's up? Hi. Um, You're new around here, aren't you? A bit? Yes. I, I can kind of tell. I've been, uh, I've been here for a while now. I can tell who's new and who's not. Is it the missing body parts that tell you that? You could say that. You're not the worst thing that I've seen, though. I've seen much worse. Kind of shrugs. Trying to look all cool. You just hang out here in the hallway? Here and there. I like to wander around the place as I see fit. Bit of a watcher. I like to look around and see how everyone's doing. Today, I figured you could use my attention. You okay with that, or is that bothering you? Uh, it doesn't bother me. I'm just wondering why. Why are any of us here? Why are any of us supposed to be here? Are we supposed to be getting better? Are we supposed to be made whole again? Because I'll let you know, I haven't felt whole in a long time. What's your name, by the way? I feel like I know you. I've known you for a while now. It's Arwen. What's your Ar name? Arwen? Huh. My name's Jericho. As I'm looking at him, I don't see any of my own body parts on him, do I? You do not, no. Okay. Well, well, why don't you lead the way and I'll... Maybe I can help out. I don't know. Alright, what do I got to lose? And I will move forward. <laughs> Funny joke, I like that. 
and the two of you, a very odd pairing, will continue on down the uh, hallway of the hospital. As you're just walking with the only two legs that you possess currently, um, you will see a few doors here and there. One on your left, one on your right. One strangely boarded up with several boards. And yet the hallway also continues on further if you do not wish to stop here. Jericho walks alongside with you. Whoopee. Um, oh, repeat that again, sorry. Jericho will say, what'll it be? Uh, Arwen will turn to him and, and ask, do you know what's behind this door? Hmm. He kind of thinks about what you've asked for a moment. You're not sure if he is meditating or thinking upon your request. But he considers it. And after a while, looks back at you and says, there's someone in there who doesn't really even resemble doesn't resemble anything living anymore. Not, not wraith-like, you know, but uh, kind of fake, artificial, pieced together, made up. You know, kind of like a golem or a model or a doll or something. Piecing itself back together, using whatever it can. Um... Not very trusting, that one. Doesn't trust anyone. Doesn't trust me. Doesn't trust any of the staff here in the hospital. Probably won't trust you either. If I'm being honest. And that's all he I, says. I do appreciate your honesty. And the door on my right? Or I guess below. Yeah. He considers it for a moment. Almost kind of like trying to remember what is behind the door. Oh, yeah. That's where the crazy lady is. Not so nice she is. She's always got a glass of wine in her hand. Always says mean and nasty things to me. I, I try to avoid her as much as possible. Uh, I get this feeling that she could read my mind if I'm in the room with her too long enough. I don't like it. I don't want her to be in my mind. She's really nasty. Don't like her. And he looks back at you. Okay. And... What about this one? It's boarded, boarded up. Why? Do you, do you know what's behind there? Oh no, never been in there. It's always been boarded up. Okay. I don't want to go into any of the rooms. I want to just go down the hall. Okay, sounds good. He walks with you as you continue onward down the hall. There are a couple more doors down this hallway as well. Okay. And I will bob my head in this direction and be like, you know who's, who's in here? Yeah, yeah I, I remember. Kind of concentrates for a little bit. Uh, there's a... There's a woman in there. 
has a very strange voice. She, at least I think she's a she, is very, very focused on her appearance. Wants to make sure that she looks perfect. Always asking for um, procedures and surgery and is always asking to be set up differently. It's kind of creepy if you ask me. Whenever I try to talk to her, she's always talking about herself. Okay. That is pretty creepy, though. And the door below? Oh, down there? Uh... And he thinks for a moment. Yeah, there's a... There's a guy in there. He's... He reminds me of, like... I don't know. Maybe something that I read in a book once. Like a fictional character, almost. He's, uh... He, he talks like he's some kind of ruler or king, like someone out of time, almost. Not really my thing. I would say that he's probably the easiest to talk with, but I, I don't speak any of that, that ruler shit. I don't talk royalty or anything, so... I try not to talk to him at all. Well, how about I give it a shot? And Arwen will start going to that door. Okay. The moment that you enter this room, and uh, Jericho will open the door for you, There is a collection of very familiar faces. Perhaps some jump out at you immediately. Perhaps some are foreign to you and questionable. All of them seem to be focused in on their own thing. There is a receptionist who seems very, very familiar to you. Sitting at the desk, answering phone calls and writing at the paperwork in front of her. But everyone else seems to be sitting inside this reception room as if waiting for their appointment. Jericho joins you. Again, just kind of keeping to himself as he watches and studies the room. Okay. As I make my way to the receptionist, can I glance around to see if anybody has any of my body parts? Yeah. Can you give me a perception and investigation roll? All right. Difficulty six. If Mm -hmm. so, three successes. Yes. As you were observing and looking around the room, there is a man who is standing on the bottom left. I'm going to pull him up on roll 20 for you. And he seems to be Described exactly as Jericho had described to you. Very royal, regal. He uh, possesses um, some very angelic-looking wings across his body and back. Very muscular in tone. Um, The reason why he's probably in this office awaiting his appointment is the protrusion of a long spike that is going through his entire torso from back to front 
He has horns on his head. But as you start to focus a little bit more on his face and the features of his head, you will notice that your eye, your missing right eye, and part of your face has been sewn onto his own face as he sits there waiting. Okay, I will not go to the receptionist. Yeah. Well, okay. as I'm walking, can I wave to her? Does she wave back like she knows me? She does not wave back at all. Okay, I will just head on over here. Okay. And uh, Alex, if you are with us, I will let you interact with her as you please. Yeah. Ah, oh, greetings. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I know it's a pleasure to meet me. Oh, hello. Yes. Um, what is your name? My name is Arwen. Yes, I'm sure it is. Um, my name, which I cannot believe you don't know this already, but my name is Lord Brennan of the Stillgaze. Well, it is a pleasure to meet you, Lord Brennan. Yes, I'm aware. I just wish to speak to you about um, your very pleasant-looking face. I just noticed that you... Did you get some work done recently? Yes, I, I recently acquired this, this new eye, and, well, frankly, it's been <laughs> eye-opening. <laughs> uh, that's... That's a good one. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. See, the thing is, to be quite frank, that is kind of my eye. I was wondering if I'm, I could I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's not. Otherwise, it wouldn't be attached to me. Oh, no, I understand. It's just things kind of happened, and now... I kind of need to get it back, and I was just wondering if you would be so kind as to return it back to me? So you are asking me to give up my vision so that you can see better? In a way, yes. You seem like a, a very important and individual I am, which is why i need all the vision i can get yes but i'm also thinking as as an important individual you have a lot of things that you need to get done right i also have a lot of things that i need to get done and it's going to be really hard if i don't have both of my eyes so i was that just wondering really, if i could get it back that really does sound like something you should have thought about before you i got your eye i'm using it you see I I can't see. That's that's the issue here, sir. Do you still have one? I do, but um, you know, I just thought you might be helpful. Is there anything that maybe I could help you with in exchange of getting my eye? I sincerely doubt it. Were we within the realm of my kingdom, I would offer you the finest of hospitality, but no, I'm here, and I have an eye, so I think I'm living my best life. <laughs> uh, at this point, Jericho will kind of shoulder himself next to Arwen, and kind of like bump her a little bit and kind of whisper to her saying I, I think he wants something that kings can't buy on their own using money or power maybe you have something like that I don't do I have like 
anything on my person? Just the Vorpal Blade at this current moment, which would mean very little to him. Okay. But then Jericho looks at you once again after a little bit of a blank stare, and he says, What about your memories? Well, I can maybe show him something. Perhaps. Or you could just sh start off by sharing something with him. Isn't that how rates work? They share something in hopes that other rates will understand them? What, well, do, you, what do you think this particular person wants to hear or see? That's a good question. Um, yeah. you know, I'll turn to Lord Brennan and I will ask, is there, if you could see anything right now, there, is there something that you would want to see? I genuinely struggled to think of anything. You see, I was born royal, and that's something that you just own. My vision now is better than it's ever been, and frankly, it doesn't look like you're in the position to offer me much of any trade. No object or coin, no acres of land, all of these things I have in plenty. Well, what if I shared a memory of something that you don't have? An experience that you've never had? A memory? A... Memory. I wonder, I wonder, is there some moment when at your absolute lowest, you made a choice, a decision, to act out of pure self-interest. Right? Would that... I wonder if that could quench my hmm, emotional need. Because I see better now than I have in a very long time. But to feel that level of getting what I truly deserve at the expense of others... That intrigues me. I wonder, do you have any memories like that? Ooh, do I have any memories like that? Let me think. Um... So, at a game, this may require Arwen to disclose or share something about herself on a personal level. It may also require you to donate using your usury a point of pathos in order to seal the deal, perhaps. So, Nicole, think of a selfish memory that you wish to share with this self-centered king in front of you. And a selfish memory. Well, uh, in a way, I guess it could be selfish. Uh, Arwen will, okay, yeah, she will start talking about the um, time that she saves the tea master. So I will say, there was this one moment where I needed to I was struggling, and instead of going in to help them, I chose to, while helping someone else, I chose to save my own skin and run. And he perished because of that. Maybe. I don't know if I really could have done anything, but I didn't try either. I could show you that. I don't know that you see as royalty I am 
very well versed in the fine arts of apathy and not doing things. I wonder if there's something where you actively took just for you. I mean, that's clearly what you're asking for. You're asking me to give up one of my eyes. Surely you have something of equal value, not just, I felt scared. Man, what has she done? That's been selfish. Yeah, the more you consider this, it seems to be a very reasonable re uh, request from the king. You're just trying to determine what would satiate what he is desiring for you to tell. Yeah. Exactly. I, am, I am noble. I was born into a life of excess and privilege, and frankly, that suits me just fine. So I wonder if you have anything that could be impressive to me in just how selfish you were. Impress me. I mm, wow. Okay. Um. Because I do really like this eye, and he reaches up and just kind of caresses it. You know, pats it, and just—it's very nice. It suits me, don't you think? Man, you know what? I don't. This is. I'm not saying this out loud, but I can't think of a moment right now where she was selfish. But I am certainly thinking about just stabbing this dude and taking the eye right now. That's pretty selfish. Um, <laughs> Jericho kind of chuckles to himself. I mean, maybe, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. Mm. Maybe, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Let's go for it. I don't know what else I can do here. So she will pretend that she's contemplating a memory. So she will literally stab him. The moment that you pull out your Vorpal Blade, the other individuals in the room, whatever they are doing, Whatever task they're performing, whatever um, small little habit that they are performing, they will stop and they will look directly at you and they will start to growl and hiss as if preparing to attack you if needs be. And you can tell that if you decide to take something by force, you will have to fight off this entire room that is full of very spectral-looking entities. And you get this sinking feeling in your body before you are able to act. What would you like to do, Nicole? Ah, Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, that would have been really selfish. Ah, darn it. Okay, so... When was I really selfish? When was I really selfish? Does Nicole's shadow have any ideas to share? Oh, is my shadow with me? That would be grateful. Like, there, really, yeah. There is a voice in your head, yes. Uh, <laughs> sorry, there's an ambulance going down my road and it was distracting me. Um, Appropriate. <laughs> uh, out of character, is this something that needs to be talked about in-game or could she like make something up as like when she was in the Skinlands because that was what was coming going through my mind? It can be something from the Skinlands? And it can be something when they were in the Shadowlands. Most likely something that she says from the Skinlands when she was still living will resonate with this king more so than the afterlife. 
Gotcha. Uh, give me a second. I'm trying to find our conversation from a bit ago. Because no, I need to okay. refresh it. I'm thinking about things as well. So I guess in that case, if I'm going to make something up based on her backstory. Mm-hmm. Um... Okay. Uh, then she will look at Laura Brennan again. Put the, the dagger back so everyone can stop growling at her. Um, Immediately everyone goes back to what their original behavior was. Okay. And Brennan, and... for the record, when you pull out the, the dagger, he's more amused than anything else. Because he's impaled on a four-foot spike. So, I mean, that's true. That is very true. Um, how about there? So, I used to train with my father in fencing, and he wouldn't let me use an actual sword for the longest time. I could only use a wooden sword. Um, but there was one time that I went to class where I was learning to fence, and there was another kid. He had a sword. And I thought, you know, I've been practicing. I should be allowed to have a sword, too. And, uh, when he went to take a break, I just just took it. Is that fight? That is interesting. So you not only defied your father, defied your mentor, and engaged in the noble arts of fencing, which I am a tremendous fan of. And you just straight up stole from your classmate. Hmm. That is interesting. Do you wish to share one pathos with this entity? Ooh. Okay, let me just double hot. A yes, but I'm also just looking to see how much pathos I have. Certainly. A yes. Okay. You're going to use your usury ability that you possess um, to conduct this. It will be your level one power transfer. I need you to roll manipulation plus usury. Okay. And the difficulty will be a six. Yay! I got five successes. Okay. How much pathos do you wish to give this entity? You can give up to five. But no, I'm just you do not possess five, but how much do you want to give him? One. One. So, with that in mind, Lord Brennan will receive the pathos from you, and it will satisfy and satiate a yearning that he has been missing for a very long time now. He will lean forward and downward with his face, allowing you to unravel your vorpal blade. Does Arwen cut out her face and her eyeball from this entity. I'll take that as a maybe. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the actual... I think I heard... I misheard something. But yes, okay. yes, I do. Okay. As described from the consultant, the Vorpal Blade will maneuver and slice and cut off the corpus flesh of this entity. He will not struggle. 
He will not be pained as you remove this right eye that belongs to you. Jericho will hold both of these in his hands. And he'll look to you. Nod. And say, where to next, Arwen? Um, let's just continue looking for more body parts and maybe take them all to the surgeon at one time. He will not again. Maybe not in this room. Okay. Um, then let's leave. As okay. you turn to as you turn to, to leave, you you know may notice that um Lord Bone actually has something approaching a tear coming down his remaining eye. And he just, just says, Thank you, child. We old lords must derive our sustenance from odd sources at times. The gift that you have given me is more valuable than most of the gold or jewels that I have ever owned. And to see you just take my eye so you could see. Well, good luck. And with that, you will depart back into the hallway. Okay. Well, this seems like it's going to be a fun, fun day. Let's, let's move on to the next one. That's how you define fun, sure, I, I guess. Where are you going next? Um, let's, get, let's just go to this one. Huh. Okay. He joins you, opens the door for you. In this room, very similar to the last, you will see some very familiar figures. However, there will be a more foreign and unusual person sitting on a couch to the far south. Everyone seems to be waiting for their appointment to come. There's a pool table decorated at the center. But everyone seems to be minding their own business at this time. All right, I'm going straight towards her because most likely it's the person I don't know that's got my body part. Is that true? Give me a perception and investigation roll. All right. That will be five successes, difficulty six. All right. This young woman appears to be wearing a very short decorative gown. She has her hair affixed backward very smoothly. And finally, she is looking almost as if she is here with purpose and intent alone by herself. For what reasons, you're not entirely sure. But the only clues that you are given about her personality is in her right arm, which is, by the way, your right arm that has been sewn onto her body. 
and she holds in with that right arm a glass of wine that she swirls back and forth very proudly and prominently. And when Rob is ready, he may interact with you. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. All right, so I will say hello. What do you want? I'm uh, kind of doing a bit of people watching here, and you seem to be the least interesting person in this room. Oh, a person with no arms and a missing face is the least important? Come on, let's chat. Mm, I don't think so. Look, I just want to see if there's anything of interest, you know? Is there something that you are hoping to experience in life? Something that you wish that you could have seen? Because I do have the ability to do that for you. Well, uh, I highly doubt I'd be interested in seeing anything associated with a dreadfully boring life like yours. How much could you get to there, Stumpy, you without those arms? Just stories of you holding things with your feet and jumping around? I, I, I don't think so. Well, you see, I, I do have more body parts that I'm trying to collect, and you actually happen to have my arms, so, uh, you know? Let's see if we can maybe cut a deal here. Yeah, well, to be honest, I, I think it was wasted on you. I, I seem to wear it much better than you do. Well, you do wear it well, but I think it would look better when it's, if it's complete form. So again, is there anything that you would like to experience, see? Well, well just tell me about yourself. Tell you what, what are we? What are you trying to make friends or something? I have no interest in telling you about me, and I have no interest in hearing about you. Some stitched up Raggedy Ann doll comes marching into this room. Really, what a bore! And I see you've come with a bone face over there, You'll still wandering of... the halls. <laughs> um. Jericho will kind of shy away at this, as if nervous, and take a step back, kind of shielding his face. Look, it looks like you like to, you know, crack some jokes, insult some people. That's great. And I will let you continue doing that with the other people in the room. I just want to talk to you about getting that arm. Well, what could you possibly have to offer me? What are you looking for? From you? Not much. Although... Hmm... I'm listening. I can't think of much you could offer me, but maybe there's something... Well, the way I see it, when you leave this room, I'll hardly remember you, but uh, perhaps there's a... But, but perhaps there's a way I could ensure that you remember me. How so? Well, you, uh... seem to be a particular type of person that, uh, I would perhaps like to do something to. I've, uh, always had it in my mind to, uh, I don't know, uh, I could give you maybe a painful memory to remember me by. I doubt you would be able to handle it, though. Jericho will whisper to Arwen. She knows that you're a Nemos. Thank you, narrator. <laughs> he did, literally does say that to Boneface. <laughs> okay, so let me get this straight. You want to give me a painful memory. And if I can take it, I can also take my arm back? I mean, if you can, maybe then you, yeah, I suppose. I highly doubt you'll be getting your arm back, though. You don't really seem to be up to the task. I'll take the challenge. Oh, 
Okay. okay. So, Rob, give me one second to pull up the ability. Nicole, remember Onslaught? Yes. Guess what uh, Rob's going to be doing to you? That. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is going to be great. Yep. All right. Let me put together Rob's dice pool. Rob, roll 7d10 for me. Seven. Difficulty, difficulty is 6. Exploding tens? No. Actually, okay. actually, yes. Oh no. <laughs> Oops. Was it seven or sixty ten? <laughs> it was seven. It was seven. Oops. Uh, I'll roll one more dice. Uh, okay. But so far, we're at eight successes. Okay. Uh. So, oh my god! Nine successes. All right. Oh my god! <laughs> oh <Holy> shit! <laughs> so Rob, um, I gave you a number between one and five. Mm -hmm. Would you like to select one of those numbers? Five. You got it, Nicole. Yeah. You will receive five points of corpus damage. Gosh darn it, Rob. <laughs> Jesus. Damn. Is this temporary or is this permanent? This is temporary. It's... Okay. Let me put it in game terms. It is superficial damage. It isn't okay. aggravated. But you are now down to one corpus damage. Rob, I want you to describe the memory that you infuse into Arwen using Onslaught. Okay, let me think about that. Uh, it, what, does it have to be a memory involving uh, Lady uh, Aphrodisiac? It can be either a personal memory or it can be a memory that Nicole would recognize that is maybe painful to her. Okay. Um let me think here. Um How about like Just, I guess, maybe a memory of, um, this is a tough one. I didn't have this off the top of my head. Um, I don't know. Uh, do you have any, like, suggestions from her backstory maybe I could work with? Certainly. I, and I can create one if, if you need, needs to be. So, as... Lady Aphrodisiac outstretches her arm to Arwen, and they clasp hands together. Arwen experiences something that she does not expect. And in that moment, she remembers being a part of the Shadowlands, being separated from Anyone that she has built friendships with, any family members that she once had, anyone that she holds close in her loving memory. And almost as if she has no method or ability or process to hold back the tide. 
She watches painfully as every friend, family member, and loved one begins to age and die of disease, accidental happenstance, or just the timing was right. Whatever that case may be, experiencing the loss of these people begins to harmonize inside of her head. And Arwen will notice that there is plasm starting to pour from her ears and her eyes and her nose and her mouth. It is in this moment that Jericho will take the Vorpal knife and very, very carefully cleave off Lady Aphrodisiac's right arm, your arm. There is this look of satisfaction from Lady Aphrodisiac when this happens, as if she had gained great pleasure by inflicting pain upon you. Five points of damage seems to satiate that urge. And Jericho will look to Arwen. Maybe we should go. I don't want to be in a room with her any longer. She's scary. No, I couldn't agree with you more. Make sure they stow the arm on to the right side. So, like, why don't you just trundle along now to your island of misfit toys, Raggedy Ann? I don't even respond. I'm still shaken up by the memory. Her abandonment issues. <laughs> And you will exit. Erica will take a moment to pull back his sleeve on his hoodie and wipe off the corpus off of your face and your ears. He seems to still be in possession of your arm and your eye. And looks to you. Uh, uh, where to next, Arwen? I'm scared. I am too. I do appreciate that you are going along with this with me. I got nothing else to do. I'm kind of stuck here anyway. So... Thanks. And uh, let's head right. Cause I don't want to go. Oh, wait. Is that a dead end at the right? No, it seems to be the exit for the entire hospital itself. If you wish to exit oh, the hospital, nope. let me know. Nope, nope, not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find more pieces. Let's keep, let's go to the left. Okay. Okay, so if I'm remembering correctly, so at the top, barely looks human, it's basically artificial. Bottom one, you said they were kind of in your head, and then you've never been in this door. Ah, oh, let's go to the artificial one. Okay.
You will enter what appears to be a morgue. There are some listless bodies lying on some of the tables, waiting to be opened up, maybe dissected before they are cremated. There is a man who is writing some reports and some paperwork. He does not seem to pay you any mind when you walk in or take notice of you. There is, however, a young girl sitting on a table upright who does take notice of you. What do you want to do, Nicole? Head on right towards her and look to see which body part she has. Okay. I will allow Jay to speak to you. And I will put the character on uh, roll 20 for you to examine her. You're a stranger. Not a big fan of strangers. This figure seems to be very doll like something made up of many parts. Most okay. notably, your left arm is attached to her as well. All right, going for the left arm. Um, she will turn to all like girl and say, "Hi, um, my name's Arwen. What's your name?" Um, I'm Gwen. Hey, our names sound similar. And Gwen just That's sits be pretty there. Cool, and right? Gwen just kind of makes herself look small and just kind of looking at you like she's afraid of you. Oh. <laughs> I was just gonna say I put my arms up in like a non-threatening way, but I have no arms, so. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> kind of have one, but it's not attached yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will. Jericho holds one of her arms. Down so I'm Don't at her level. Disarmed. Oh wait, what? I missed what you said. I said Jericho holds up one of uh, Arwen's arms and says, "Don't worry, she's unarmed." <laughs> no. <laughs> Arwen will kneel so that she's at the same level as Gwen, so that maybe she seems less threatening. What do you want? I know this is strange. I, I was hoping I can hit that arm. Mm, I don't know you. You don't know me. Why would I share? I can... I can tell you about myself. Will that help? Mm, maybe. Is there okay, something, tell me something in particular you'd like to know? Hmm. Gwen swings her legs just a little bit, thinking. How about Kron? Do you know Kron? Kron, whatever. Kron. Um. Uh, I mean, I'm learning a about him. What? What did you want to know? Hmm. Well, what have you learned about Charon so far? Um, let me go back. Let's see, one of the specific memories that I've got. Nicole, you get an impression that mm -hmm. you will need to share 
one specific memory of Charon with this individual. Okay. Perhaps by using one of your powers, you can share that with her. Right. If I share it, do I, do I still keep it, or does she keep it? You don't know. Oh, no. Hmm. Okay. Um, mm, all right. That's a, that's a tricky one. Okay, which one should I give up? Which one should I give up? Let's give up the Argos memory. Okay. And looks like I would need to use one of my abilities here. It's duplicating a target's memory. Um, I would recommend Soul Keeper. Okay, that was the one I was looking at, and I wasn't sure if I could do that on myself. <laughs> so, if you decide to use Soul Keeper, just a reminder, Nicole. Mm hmm. Just pulling up the ability in my book right now. It'll cost you one pathos and one willpower. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yep. But she's willing, so I don't gain an angst. You will not gain an angst. And I need you to describe the memory to her. What you see and what she experiences. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I may need to switch memories, because I'm like, Argos was like the first one I learned, and I'm like, do I remember that one very well? Um... I'll go with Argos. My notes seem okay. So first, before we begin this, I need you to roll your intelligence plus nemosis. Difficulty five. Just wonder, can my shadow help me here? Like give me shadow dice or no? Sorry, your, sorry, your shadow, see. even your shadow has abandoned you. <laughs> <laughs> your shadow can't speak to you right now, but <laughs> so it's going to help you. Well, sorry, what was that, Miles? You cut out really badly. I said your shadow um, is currently with you and can speak with you, but mm -hmm. can help you using okay. shadow dice. I, I figured, I thought I'd ask, though. Oh, yeah. All right, difficulty five. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I can explode the 10. Uh, I didn't do it so well. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, three successes. Right. <laughs> Please describe the memory to Gwen that you are sharing. Okay. And giving so her. I have here that when we looked at the Argos door, Charon is in a boat. On the river of sorrow and he was arguing with his shadow to fend him off so i guess i'm i, I kind of want to describe like the boat sort of like going along on the waves and hair on i don't know what he really looked like though but i'm assuming kind of like a an imposing figure um and yeah, he's kind of just arguing back and forth with his shadow. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Good. While this is taking place and the exchange is being made, you will notice that Gwen goes into a very strong state of stupor as if taking in the memory very very wholeheartedly it is at this moment that Jericho takes the moment to also cleave off the left arm of Gwen while she is serendipitously Focused on the uh, 
memory that she is acquiring, this precious, precious memory. And Gwen appears to be almost taken aback by what you have given her, this gift, this memory. It's almost as if Arwen has experienced what all the other Nimoy has experienced by giving away their memories of Charon to her. What that feels like, that loss. Jericho looks to Arwen. Are we done here? Yeah, we're done here. It was nice meeting you, Gwen. And I will leave. Okay. There's so much sacrifice and loss. Arwen and Jericho return back to the hallway. Two arms and one eyeball in possession. What else has Arwen lost? Has she lost anything else? It's hard for her to remember. That's a good question. I guess we'll go find out by going in this one to see what's in here. Okay. Jericho will join you as well. In this room, there is a, it appears to be a patient's room for appointments. There is no doctor. There is no nurse. There is only a client sitting on one of the beds to the right-hand side. Okay. She does not appear to have a face. She has no eyes. She has no nose. She has no ears. She is just a horrific muscular sight. An abomination with four arms that sits patiently. However, there is one thing that you do recognize that is settled on top of her face. It is your death mask. Oh. And she just sits there. Doctor, is that you? Doctor? No. Just a, another patient. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just waiting for my doctor. <laughs> Excuse me. I will walk yeah. out of the room. Okay. And the two of you depart. Jericho will look to you. I'm guessing there was nothing important in there then? It's my death mask. Oh. I guess you don't need that then, huh? Well, that's the thing. I feel like I... Shouldn't I need it? Maybe I don't need it. This... I'm in pretty rough shape. I don't know. I don't know if I should go for that. Okay. You're gonna abandon your mask? <laughs> At a game, I haven't even worn it once, so I'm like, <laughs> is it even necessary? Ah, <laughs> uh. okay. In game, I'm thinking about it. I don't know. 
don't know if I want to take the risk to try and get something like that. If that's the death mask, it's behind this door. Jericho looks uh, to you. I don't know. I've never been in there. All right. Do you, do you mind helping me take down the boards? We'll just take a peek. I, I can try, yes. some time and effort but um small weak little jericho will pull and pry the boards off of this door allowing the two of you to force it open and you will actually gain entry into this new room of the hospital together Oh, that doesn't look great. It appears to be a room with a operating table to the far right. Doctor's notes, bookshelves. There is a catwalk that has been fixated up above with some staircases leading up to it for observation. There are various modules and apparatus that are connected to the walls using tubes and metal plates. But most disturbingly is the maw, the abominable and voracious looking maw up to the north that only seems to be giving off the sense of hunger as if it is looking for someone, anyone to devour at any given moment. It is at this moment that both Jericho and Arwen will hear the footsteps. of some other individuals right behind you. Uh, you will recognize them almost immediately. Trying to find your surgeon. Ah, there he is. Surgeon. <laughs> Got him. All four individuals will walk into the room right behind you and Jericho. The consultant will look over to Arwen and say, Are you ready to begin? We're having the surgery in here. What about what about the other room? Mm, no, this is you've come to the right place. I believe you've gathered everything that you need. Everything that I'm willing to get at this point. Sometimes you have to decide what to leave behind. So yes. Hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm, 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 very good. Then uh, come with me, please. And she will walk underneath the catwalk and um, over to the procedure table to the far right. She will be followed by the others as well.
your nurse will check you and your vitals and see that you are fit for surgery and fit to be worked on. Nod his head several times towards the surgeon, and the surgeon will take the body parts from Jericho, observe them very carefully. Jericho kind of goes off to the side, very nervous and scared. Before the procedure is conducted, the man wearing the very formal suit will approach Arwen and say, you, you know, you don't need to go through with this. I can get you out of here. I can bring you out of here if you want to. You don't have to go through with this. This is disgusting and it's horrific. It's probably not meant for you. Let's say I just get you out of here. Quick and easy. How would you like that? Where would you be taking me? Somewhere warm, comforting. A place where you don't have to think for yourself anymore. A place where we all end up in the end. But at least you would have me holding your hand the entire way. And you wouldn't be alone. We would do this together. You and I. Oh, that's really tempting to her. That is so tempting. Um... If, if I chose to still go with the surgery, would you and Jericho still stay right here? Jericho will kind of scratch the forehead of his death mask. Yeah, I, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be with you. I'm scared, but... I... I... I I have a feeling this is where I need to be right now. Then I will, I will go with the surgery. Okay. I really think I want to go back to my circle. I'm going to go with it. Okay. With this in mind, the surgeon that you have selected will lie you down on the table where the surgery is to be conducted. He will place both of your arms and your eye to the side. And then he will go over to the orifice residing in the room and pick up one of the tendrils, and you will notice that along the tendril that he has picked up is a needle and a strand that he starts to pull from. And when he does this, the orifice will start to moan and complain, almost as if he was taking something from it and hurting it. And he will begin to stitch back together your left arm. And then he will pull again from another tentacle from the maw, painting it even further to stitch back together your, your right arm. And then he will pull again from another extension of this opening, this mouth, and start to sew together 
your face and eye back onto your body. Nicole, out of game. During this harrowing, who is your shadow? Jay. Who? Is it Jay? Uh, out of all the NPCs that you have experienced in this harrowing, oh. who is your shadow? Well, my shadow, well, I, I guess it would be this guy, mainly because my shadow wants me to go to oblivion, so I'm assuming the one who wants to take me elsewhere would be the shadow. Nicole, who is your Edelon? Uh, okay. That's like the connection to the Skinlands, right? Your Edelon is the part of your soul that wants you to thrive and survive. It is the more optimistic side of you that wants to keep you going and wants to pull you out of any harm's way. It is basically your soul. I, out of these three, I guess it would be Jericho? Okay. And now, Nicole, you will get to do something very, very familiar. All right. I need you to roll 9d10 for me. Difficulty 7. Okay, this is where I was holding my idol on because I was hoping that I can use this somewhere. Can I use it now? Yes, you may. Cool. That makes it now Would 10 you? d10? Would you like to add it to one of your dice, uh, one more dice to your dice pool? Or would you like to decrease the difficulty by one? I'll decrease the difficulty. Okay. Okay, so 90-10. Difficulty... Difficulty 6. 6. Okay. Oh, please, please, please. Oh, wait. One, two, three. Two successes. Okay. Would you like to blow a willpower to reroll three of those die? Reroll. I need more successes. You don't know yet. No, because I only got one left. So no. actually, actually, you have two. I thought I had to use one for Soul Keeper. You did. You currently have two temporary points of willpower left. Oh. Okay. You I was running. I was you, thinking I only had two left. Okay. You might have gained one back for um, expressing your nature. Oh. Okay. Cool. Yes, I will definitely use one to reroll three. Okay. Please do. Hey, two more successes. Okay. So total oh. of four. All right. Jay, I need you to roll 6d10 for me. Difficulty 6. Jay, don't kill me. I'm really hoping I don't. 6d10. Difficulty 6. Well, I got... Uh... One, two, three... Three successes. Alright. I believe Nicole's 4 beats your 3. Yes! Thank God. Oh my goodness. And thank goodness that you that you blew that willpower, Nicole. I'm sweating. At this very <laughs> moment, the maw of the creature in this room will extend its tendrils in absolute protest, grabbing a hold of the um, gentleman who had offered you an easy way out, 
and pulls him deep into the maw. You hear him scream and shout as he disappears into the void. Next, your consultant will be grabbed from underneath her feet. She almost didn't see it coming. The nurse will have his torso wrapped around with a couple tentacles himself and get pulled in. Up from the ceiling, a tentacle will wrap itself around your surgeon and pull him into the maw, satiating the appetite of this creature. Second to last will be Jericho, this young boy. A single tendril will grab onto his ankle, and he will cry out for help to Arwen, begging for his life. What does Arwen do? Can I, can I reach for him? You may. You have both of your arms intact. I will try to pull him away. Okay. The moment that you do this, the entity will wrap more tentacles around both Arwen and Jericho simultaneously and take both of you in to its voracious appetite. And Arwen will be surrounded in darkness yet again, feeling that emptiness that she did when she first came here. Everything will go blank. And that is our distraction heroine. Did, did I make a bad decision by trying to save Jericho there? Not at all. I thought, okay, was a good, good. I, thought, I actually thought that was a good decision. Oh, okay. I thought me being eaten <laughs> just defeated the purpose of me beating Jay. It's mostly symbolic. Gotcha. Yeah. So, for tonight, everyone will receive some bonus experience points to their character sheets for participating. Um, does anyone have any questions or thoughts about the heroine? This one was a little bit more grisly compared to the last one. Yeah, I'd like to nominate uh, Nicole for a uh, the player nom since she's the only player character in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I will happily take that experience point. <laughs> Best player character in the night. This is very true. Well, thank you everyone for participating. I thought everyone did a marvelous job role playing as the vectors that I gave them. Uh, Nicole, what can you share with us with your experience in this destruction heroine? Um, you know, well, you guys now learn she's got some abandonment issues. <laughs> um, so <laughs> there is that. But yeah, this was, this was a lot of fun. Terrifying. <laughs> fun. Uh, I didn't know where this was going. And I am surprised that I kind of made it. I didn't think yeah. I would at the end. Four successes beats three. That was pretty well rolled. God. <laughs> 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 and Rob, like, almost murdering me there with, like, all the <laughs> damage. That was yeah. fun. <laughs> Gives you something to look forward to in case you decide to uh, buy the ability of Onslaught. Yeah, that seems fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as I had discussed with you before, Nicole, any mm -hmm. rift that goes into a destruction heroine does not come out the same as they once were. You will receive... Well, let's just say a psychosis of sorts. I have one in mind for you in particular. Uh, we will okay. not discuss it here because I want it to be a surprise for the other players. 
but um, you and I will discuss how it, this can be role played. Um, if you had noticed that Rob was playing his character a little bit differently when he came out of his, yes, that is what is to be expected as well from you when you come out of your destruction harrowing. And eventually you will be able to buy off your psychosis so that you no longer okay. have to struggle with it. But um, I have a feeling that you're not going to enjoy the effects of them. <laughs> oh, yay. Yay. All right. So thank you, everyone, for participating. Have yourself a really good Halloween. And uh, thank you for making this a really good Halloween for uh, Nicole to experience. Yes, thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye, Craig. Bye.